NASA has a space probe called Dawn, which has been orbiting the dwarf planet Ceres, and this sits between Mars and Jupiter. The probe is sending back data on this small body which we previously knew almost nothing about, and a whole constellation of papers detailing Dawn's discoveries have just been published this week. Laura Brooks asked the Open University's Professor of Planetary Geoscience, David Rothery, to take her through the results. Well, Ceres is the largest body in the asteroid belt, and it's turned out to be not a boring lump of rock with just craters on it. It's got a long, complicated history. So one of the things that scientists think that they've, they've identified on Ceres is an ice volcano. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I think you're referring to the feature that's been named Ahuna Mons. It's, it's a remarkable feature. When I first saw it, it really puzzled me. It is, it's a steep-sided mountain. I think the slope's about 40 degrees. They're four kilometres high. The top is flat-ish, so steep-sided, flat-topped feature, sticking up four kilometres out of the plains. It's weird. And the, the best explanation we have for it is that it is a... It's analogous to a lava dome on the Earth where some viscous magma oozes out and forms a steep-sided dome. But this is not molten rock. It's, it's caused by ice, probably salty ice, to keep the melting temperature down. We've known about icy volcanism on the icy moons of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, well, and on the surface of Pluto um, for a while, except we only learned about Pluto last year. But this is the best steep-sided lava dome analogue we've seen anywhere in the solar system. What else are we finding out now from the dawn data? Well, we're finding that there are cracks in the surface, there are chains of um, pit craters where it looks like there are fractures in the surface. We're finding that the flows are not all like uh, steep-sided faces like a Huna Mons. There are some much lower density flows that have spread further. It's clearly a complex world. It's not a, a simple ball that's just sat there and soaked up the impact cratering. It's got a lot of geology that's gone on in the past. What are the mysteries that are still in store for Ceres? Um, they're still working quite hard on the spectroscopic data to just understand the nature of the materials at the surface. There are clay minerals resolved there. You can see that the rock has chemically interacted with water to give you clay minerals. Um, there is the issue of, is it actually venting any water to space? Water is very hard to see close to Ceres, so is, this, is there venting going on to space or not? We want to map the gravity field better to understand the interior of Ceres. How separate is the ice in the interior from the rock in the deeper interior and from the rockier um, outer crust? Can you put it into a bigger context for us? Why do we want to know these things? Most people think of the asteroids as rocky bodies or metallic bodies, as a few are. Ceres is so big, it's got a lot of water, ice in its interior. There's a continuum of, of types of bodies from truly rocky to truly icy, and the surface of Ceres puts it somewhere in between. Um, but it just it's part of a family. If you want to understand planetary bodies, you don't just study one. You need to study the spectrum of them. And you get a much better appreciation for how decent-sized, rocky, icy bodies can function as worlds. David Rothery from the Open University. He was speaking with Laura Brooks.